getting livable cities. We've talked about what is the problem and how you actually sort of reach people, but you know, what are the solutions? I'll talk about this in sort of different categories, like London, Europe and so on. We do need to build public understanding. Illegal wood burning banned by the Clean Air Act is still responsible for about 5 to 10 percent of annual mean PM across London. One of the things that amazes me about that uh, is that it's actually sort of people who think that they're being environmentally friendly by burning wood, you know, in a log fire in the middle of London on a, on a weekend evening. Our problem is diesel, diesel, diesel. It's responsible for 90 to 95 percent of the PM 2.5 exhaust emissions and NO2 exhaust emissions, so there is no way in the world we can reduce those harmful transport emissions in cities without, in effect, banning diesel as we banned coal so successfully 60 years ago from the most polluted places in our cities. That's not to say we have to ban it outside cities, but diesel and people do not mix, and that is something which there's an awful lot of evidence about it. It's also, to me, uh, this idea of um, banning diesel as we banned coal so successfully 60 years ago. It's not just about sort of thumping one thing. I think this is actually about opportunity. This is actually about re-engineering our cities. Let's encourage all the really good things. I've been very uh, pleasantly surprised by the large number of cyclists in Melbourne, for example. Melbourne seems a much more pedestrianised city in the, in the heart than it was when I was here even sort of two and a half, three years ago. Now, let's encourage all of those really good things and let's come up with uh, ways of discouraging the bad things. It's not saying don't drive a vehicle, it's basically saying drive a smaller vehicle and preferably petrol or hybrid or, or electric. But let's not forget um, tyre and brake wear because even when you deal with all of the exhaust emissions you're still going to have tyre and brake wear. The one thing I would sort of add to that list is agriculture. I mean it is a huge UK problem but it's also a huge European problem. This National Emission Ceilings Directive that's being worked on at the moment, the farming lobby is intensely trying to stop us having binding limits across Europe and they don't want ammonia or methane subject to that sort of binding limit. It's inexcusable, it's the sort of classic low-hanging fruit and they're, they're a very powerful lobby. Talked a bit about emissions versus congestion measures I sat down with one of the mayor's deputy mayors and we talked about the sort of emission-based road charging which is a way of really combining congestion and emission measures and she had this spectacular idea which is that what we ought to do is charge the most polluting vehicles for driving at the busiest times of day in the worst possible places. We ought to charge them and in effect have an emissions um, or pollution sort of trading system where we actually use the money from those people to pay people to walk or cycle. Pay people to walk or cycle. Now that's a sort of revolution that I'm talking about. Very positive. And this is the Mayor's ultra low emission zone. He started by proposing a ban of the most polluting vehicles from 2020. And after a couple of years, um, he did what he's always done on air pollution measures. He took um, several backward steps and we ended up saying that any diesel car could come in uh, and pay £12.50 a day to drive around London whenever they felt like it. It is already shaping up to be a top two or top three issue for the London mayoral elections next May. Australia and New Zealand challenges, a bit loath to try and tell you what your challenges are, and even more loath, you'll see the big question mark on the next slide, to tell you what the solutions might be. You do have some quite intense issues. Australia has some very big challenges with dust storms. We've got big problems with sort of wood burning, and I'm very conscious of that, and that's a sort of New Zealand problem as well as an Australian problem. Newcastle apparently is the biggest coal port in the world. I mean, the traffic that goes with that in terms of um, uh, diesel trains, of course, the impact of stockpiles and so on, while we have to be careful about you know, what is coal and what is, for example, wood burning during the winter. Uh, but I think there are some um, very big issues there. The Americans are shutting down coal-fired power station after coal-fired power station. Europe, there are no more being built. They're being shut down in the UK. You know, China's already indicated that that's its direction of travel. And I think it's time to really look uh, beyond coal. Um, coal is definitely part of the problem here.
Please don't forget shipping and sort of Sydney ferries. I'm always amazed when I see the Sydney ferries just chugging out stuff right in the middle of Circular Quay. Solutions, again, you'll see some similarities.